good hello welcome to harmony common problems as files start to get more and more complicated navigating them may become a bit of an issue especially if you're used to things like like grouping things into symbol hierarchies or having different scenes having a timeline that is literally hundreds of layers tall might seem a bit daunting Fortunately, there is a variety of different ways to isolate and navigate a file so that, and when, trust me, when you get used to them, it'll feel like you're parkouring all over your document. Number one, the O key. The O key on the keyboard zooms to stuff. If you use the transform tool to select any piece of artwork in your scene, and then on the timeline press O, it'll zoom you straight to that layer. If you press O multiple times, it will collapse and open whatever area it is inside of. Furthermore, pressing the B key will automatically navigate you one up in the hierarchy. So if you're working with a rigged thing and you select the hand, hitting that will bop you up to the lower arm, up to the complete arm, to the shoulder, all the way up until you've selected the entire character. Very handy for quickly selecting pegs, considering they often don't have visual representation on the stage. You can select the piece of artwork that is most closely related to it, and then by pressing that keyboard shortcut, hop up to the peg you want. Furthermore, the O key doesn't just select within the timeline. You can also use it to navigate a very complicated node field. Again, by selecting the artwork on the stage or the layer, pressing the O key in the node view will zoom you straight to it works backwards too. By selecting a node, you can zoom straight to the layer in the timeline. This is especially useful for navigating to effects that require animation. Selecting this transparency, then pressing the O key in the timeline will take me to where I need to be in order to start slapping some keyframes down. Number two, the drawing view. A lot of newcomers are quite confused by what the purpose of the drawing view is. Is it like the camera? It's a bit different. One's gray, one's white. What's going on? In short, it just isolates one layer at a time. Again, if you've got a really complicated scene and you just need to quickly duck in and you do a little bit of a change to like a hand or something, selecting that hand, going to the drawing view, there it is. No interruptions, no distractions, get you a bit of work done, pop back out again. Rather than having to turn off or turn on tons and tons of layers, you just want to do some roughing for a bit, go to the drawing view. And just, it's just a blank piece of paper. Some people live in here, some just you know, you're never in it for more than 30 seconds at a time to do some quick edits. Either way, a very, very handy feature indeed. Number three. In the very, very bottom left of the timeline view, there is these three little buttons here. The one on the left changes what the timeline shows. Changing it from the default to show selected layers is the quickest and easiest way to clean up the timeline for moment to moment use. Now, any parts that you directly select from the scene are the only layers that are gonna show up in the timeline. Likewise, in the node view, any parts you select there are the only things that are gonna show up in the timeline. This is awesome when you need to animate some elements together and you like to be selecting all of those layers at once and pushing and moving their keyframes and drawing exposures around. But in reality, they're they're like they're spaced really, really far apart and it'd be a pain in the ass to reach them all, right? Now they're all together. It's awesome. Personally, I probably spend more time in this mode than in the default view. It means the node view is the primary way of actually navigating the layers and the timeline is strictly f just for that, for animating. Like, I don't actually care what the, the hierarchy of the timeline looks like. I, I, I do it all over there. Number four, the display node. This is probably by far my favorite way of navigating documents. Again, I respect there's probably a lot of elements and advanced users watching this, so this one isn't for you, I'm afraid, but when you have access to the node view in premium, I just love to put display nodes everywhere and name them after characters, different components, essentially any area of a file where I tend to work fairly exclusively at a time. From there, in the top toolbars, there is an optional display field. And from the dropdown, can select any of the display nodes that I've created. The beauty of this is that it changes the default to only show the layers that connect to it. So now rather than having the entire scenes worth of hundreds and hundreds of layers, I've just got that one character's face if I want. Maybe it's set up to show different scenes. It can even be taken one step further. In preferences under advanced, there is this checkbox here, advanced displays. It puts the same display drop-down windows 
on different things. Particularly, it's now on the camera view and on the timeline. So I can have the timeline show something different to what the camera view shows. This is a few different uses as well. A couple of my favorites is having multiple cameras, each of them set to different displays, so I can see isolated areas of the scene, but bouncing off each other in real time. Or I can have one that's just displaying the roughs or the animatic still, and then one that's showing the finished scene. Another would be taking an extra composite with all the strings of different nodes that tend to get animated and leaving static stuff aside and then putting all them into a display and setting the timeline to show that. So now I've just got a bit of a cleaner timeline that only shows what's relevant, ignoring some of the housekeeping ones. Number five, grouping. Good old fashioned grouping. There's kind of a couple different ways it goes down here, doesn't it? Because in the layer hierarchy, just putting everything grouped into a peg is just a really nice way of getting it all out of the way. And now it can be animated as such all at once. In the node view, uh, grouping is really the way to go. It puts it all into one box, which now becomes a reusable piece. I often like to have effects very isolated from the character so that they can be grouped and easily reused later. Number six, disabling and enabling composites. I use composite nodes all the time, not always just for grouping things together so I can apply something to a unified thread, but just for a visibility switch. I very rarely go through layers and making them invisible or visible or locking and unlocking them. I just turn the composite off and then the whole character goes away and I don't have to worry about it. Number seven. Next to each layer is this little white box. This allows you to color the layer, make it a little bit more visible, make it stand out from some of the other things that maybe you deem to be a bit more irrelevant. Selecting and changing the colors of a whole bunch of layers at once works as well. In the node view, it's reflected by a little tab that sticks out showing the color that you've chosen. I hope you found this video useful. Harmony Common Problems is an onion skin mini series of the things I wish I knew when first starting with this program. Keep an eye out for other episodes covering these topics. With the help of my patrons, I've been able to commit to weekly videos for the year of 2020. If you're interested in getting hold of the working files from these videos or joining the Discord where we swap notes, challenge each other in our animation abilities, I'd be thrilled to have you around. It means I can continue making educational content available to the public for free. So thanks again.